There we go. Hi guys, this is Katie Hawkins from Unbridled Equine. I'm here with you today for our webinar that is going to discuss the benefits of the Aquapacer during the winter months. I don't know about you, um, but I'm actually enjoying this change of climate that I'm in, in moving, um, I'm pretty much like 12 hours south where I are, I guess, southwest of where I was before. And, uh, but winter is still upon us, even though I don't have Chicago winters anymore, which I am greatly appreciating. Um, but as you probably know, winter can give us a lot of challenges when dealing with horses, but specifically dealing with horses that might be in their rehab, you know, their rehab progress and really needing a way to work these horses so that it's safe and controlled. And what's cool is, is that this, this tool that we're able to use allows us to continue with our programs through the winter months. Um, and so just a little bit of background, um, I own Unbridled Equine. Unbridled Equine is a massage, rehab, and business consulting company. And uh, I'm happy to say that six months ago, I partnered with Pinnacle Equine based out of Northwest Arkansas. And now um, I'm able to offer not only on-site Aquapacer trainings, but also in-house here in Arkansas. Um, trainings as well for people that are looking to get an Aquapacer, people that um, have one and... Let me make sure this is Jess from Hudson. Oh, that's all right. She's going to be here in a little bit. She's just running late. I always like to have someone here from Hudson in case you have a question for them. So Jess is going to be joining us from Hudson. Um, <clears throat> and so it it's one of those things that we were able to partner and really bring um, high quality research based rehab to um, Northwest Arkansas and the surrounding areas. So I'm happy to be here. And like I said, I'm also happy to have less intense um, negative temperature feet of snow kind of winters as well. But we've had our challenges here um, with these winter months as well. So um, like always, if you have any questions, I'll have the chat open. Feel free to also raise your hand and I'll see that. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation. I'm gonna share my screen um, and uh, share a little bit of that, but mostly it's gonna be interactive and videos and fun stuff because we wanna see all those horses and the fun stuff we do. So with that, let me... Share my screen. All right. It looks like you have a loose horse behind you, Katie. Does it look like it? No, they're actually ah, that's my horse. <laughs> um, hold on, I gotta, I gotta do this. Uh, so he is totally um handing it up for my webinar. Uh, that we're doing indoor turnout today because of winter. Um, and so, <laughs> um, my horse's name is Dougie, and he's a total ham. Hi, Douglas. He'll actually be in our presentation today. Um, so yeah, no loose horses, just horses uh, turned out in the indoor. Thank you. That's actually helpful because if there was one, I'd be like, time out. Um, I'll be right back. Uh, but no, they're just in the indoor arena. Uh, we have gotten tons of rain and our turnout paddocks are flooded. So we are utilizing indoor turnout and our aqua pacer. Um, but thank you, fellow horse horse friend. Uh, <laughs> I don't know any loose horses. And that would be my my horse that would bomb my my webinar. He's he's a total total guy like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, and I'm gonna have um, you guys off to the side so that I can make sure to see you as I go. Um, but let me pull this up really quick. All right, so I'm gonna put us over here. Can you guys see my screen okay? Thumbs up if you can. Yep. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Okay, so let me move this over a little bit more. I'm just gonna get situated so I can make sure I can see everything. There we go. All right, so the benefits of the Aquapacer during the winter months. So let's get started. First of all, cause it's the new year, I said I wanted to get to know you all um, a little bit better. And is my internet being slow? No, or yeah. Okay, I think we're all right. Um, okay, so I wanted to first, I wanted to get to know you guys a little bit better. Um, and this is helpful for me so that I can um, tailor my presentations and webinars to you guys um, and what you're doing uh, to make sure that I'm hitting all the topics that you need. And uh, it's also just fun to get to know who I'm talking to. So let's go to 
All right. So with these, I'm going to have you raise your hand um, or send me in the chat. Well, let me make sure. It's hard to see everybody when you're, you're doing it this way. One more second, I swear. Okay. So first things first. Oh, stop the computer. There we go. First things first is I would love to know who owns an Aquapacer um, unit specifically. Is there anyone here uh, that owns an Aquapacer already? Well, it's kind of fun. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to go to my chat. All right, Mary, you do. Awesome. So Mary is one of our... Um, I'm in the hospital surgery waiting room and won't be able to talk. I do not own that. Okay, that is fine. And putting it in the chat is an easy way for me to see it. So that's not a problem. And I love that you're multitasking because that is my life in a nutshell, um, is doing multiple things at once, <laughs> which I sometimes and sometimes don't do successfully. So most of you do not have an Aquapacer with just a few of you or no, just Mary that has one. Fun. I love this. Okay, so all this stuff is not going to be old news, and you guys are gonna gonna love to hear it, and you're gonna fall in love. <gasps> Yours is gonna be there in two weeks. Yay! Good, 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 good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Christy, uh, thank you for for chatting. Um, and okay, so you have a hydro horse, perfect. And I know Shyla, you have a, a horse gym one. Um, and so one thing I love is that. You know, I talk specifically about the Aquapacer because I work with Hudson and because that's the unit I've used. But oftentimes we can troubleshoot with other machines as well. Um, and I mean, I'm I'm somewhat, you know, I, I like Hudson the best because I love their Aquapacer. But I I really enjoy that we're able to create a community where we're talking about water treadmills as a whole and how we're using them. And it is not specific to, to one um, type of water treadmill. So thank you for letting me know. Um, but I love that a few of you do have them and that Christy, um, you are getting yours soon. I, I'm so happy about that. Christy came and um, had an in-house training here in Arkansas. And so I'm really pumped that she gets to have her Aquapacer soon. All right, how about this? Um, next up is, make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. Do you run an equine rehab facility or a barn? Where are we at as far as what you guys are doing right now? So this makes me kind of get insight on who is doing this as of now, but maybe wants to add in an aquapacer or a water treadmill and who um, is st maybe still doing their other job. And this is something they're going to do in the future. So awesome. So I have Shyla, you are running a rehab center. Tamara, you, yes, rehab and conditioning. Um, Christy, rehab, Mary, both, awesome. Um, anyone else that I missed? Chelsea, where are you at with stuff? Um, so we run a uh, veterinarian owned um, rehab facility in Kentucky. Awesome. Um, a lot of our competitors obviously have um, not necessarily the Hudson, but a lot of. Right models around our area we're right around lexington so okay so spy coast and kesmar thing star yeah yeah, <laughs> I agree, yeah. so yeah, i mean that makes sense yeah, those are, yeah those we're, are like 20 minutes. Minutes. we're 20 and, minutes from everybody so okay yeah. and luckily you're in a location that has sorry the of course they're going to use the vacuum on the aisle right when i'm giving my <laughs> webinar thus is life at a barn um but luckily in lexington you have a plethora of horses so um the nice thing is as i say there's always enough to go around and yeah. the really neat thing about that area specifically is that most people are already educated about mm -hmm. rehab and fitness mm -hmm. and um but yes i would agree that they are used to having some sort of um, hydrotherapy or water treadmill therapy now the interesting thing is you know, um, Spy Coast has the two machines. They're both from Europe. Um, I've, I've been to Spy Coast. And so they have those two, but Kesmark has just the pool. Um, and so I have a previous webinar when I talk about pools versus above ground treadmills that you could always check out uh, to talk a little bit about the differences. But I think you are headed in the right direction looking more for an above ground treadmill. Um, and I'm just really biased because I've now worked with two Hudson's and I love them. Um, so my next question for you is I'd love to know which state you live in. Um, so I'd love to know where you live, uh, cause that gives me an idea of just where people 
are doing this because it definitely varies from state to state and country to country um, how things are running. So I have Christy in Utah. Shyla, yes, you're our Canadian. <laughs> we love that you're here. All right, so tomorrow, Michigan, awesome. I actually have a uh, a client that I will talk about that's here from Michigan. Uh, that's one of our rehab clients. So I'll show him later in the presentation, but yes, awesome. Uh, I was a fellow, well, I guess you guys are Midwest in Michigan, but yeah, being from Illinois, you were just right above me. And then we know Chelsea is from Kentucky. Um, Tracy, where are you coming from? You can let us know in the chat if you want, but good. So we have kind of, oh, Florida. Perfect. Okay. I'm a little jealous of you, um, but yes. Awesome. So that I like when we have kind of a wide array of areas because first of all, our, our, you know, temperatures are going to be different, but second of all, the clientele and the atmosphere of the equine industry varies from area to area, but also there's a lot that's similar as well. So awesome. I love to hear about that. All right. So next um, we're going to go into a little bit about winter and horses. So, um, in my opinion, winter weather and horses just totally stink. Um, I love, I love working in the equine field most of the year, but winter and I, uh, we're kind of, we have a love hate relationship. It's beautiful when it first snows, which is why I put this picture in of our barn, um, with the freshly, fallen snow um, because it does make for beautiful pictures, but it really makes sometimes for a headache with horses. Um, so just to talk a little bit about how it works with, with winter weather and horses. So oftentimes I personally am miserable because uh, we get the lucky job of working outside or hopefully in a heated barn. Um, the frigid temps uh, really lead into the idea that that's where it gets dangerous and messy. So a lot of times in winter we're dealing with, you know, snow and ice, but then we get that fun times when it melts and then we get, you know, melted areas that become ice or we get right now what we're dealing with is, OK, we had snow, it's all melted and then we get rain on top of it and it freezes at night um, when it's, you know, down in the 30s. And then in the morning, we're not sure what we're going to get. It's going to rain more or we're going to have ice under the snow or we're just going to have icy areas that you can't really see. So. <laughs> that's where winter I think has so many variables that are hard to work with that just make working horses way more challenging. Um, so what I want to get into is, all right, I thought this would make you guys laugh. So this is, this is Dougie. He's still crashing my, my webinar. I think he's this direction. There he is. Um, he must be interested or know that he's in this. Um, so I wanted to, to show a video of, I called this Instagram versus reality. So the snow had just fallen. My kids were having a snow day and it was like, oh, let's put the horses outside. This will be so fun and idyllic. And Dougie's from Florida. I don't know if he's ever seen snow. How fun will this be? But I don't know if any of you guys can relate. This is how, um, it actually went in reality. Be careful, Dougie. Come on. Douglas, Douglas. No, Dougie. So I don't know about any of you, but when my horses go outside and they start slipping with all four feet and they're trying to canter off with the mini meat ball that they go out with, all I can see is, oh my gosh, you're gonna hurt yourself. Oh, stop it. Make good choices, please. <laughs> so what could have been a fun situation, and you can hear my kids are there too, the whole time, Dougie, Dougie, be careful. Um, sometimes running a rehab center, you know too much. So I feel like in the winter, what I end up doing is worrying a lot. Um, not only because horses are horses and they sometimes make bad choices, but on top of that, you know, with shoes. So in that situation in particularly, the snow was very compactable. So it was compacting in his shoes and making everything slippery. And all I could see was him falling. So that was me hollering at him to be careful. And that beautiful snow day for them to be outside and romp in the snow was about an hour. And then I needed to bring him in because it was making me too nervous and I don't need an ulcer. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit of how we utilize winter um, as far as how do we utilize it with the water treadmill in mind. So something that can be challenging with horses in the winter is not only keeping their physical energy, you know, burned and down. So we need to let them, you know, 
burn off some steam. They normally would be outside maybe somewhere, you know, from three to eight to 24 hours. And now they're cooped up inside or they're outside in the snow and they're not able to move around and do as much. Um, and so one of the things we like to do is um, with our new horses or our challenging horses or our horses that are maybe younger and, um, you know, when they're outside most of the day, they're pretty chill and easy to work with. But when there's cold temps, they might just get a little bit sillier or we have new horses coming in. Part of our preparation and water treadmill um, protocol that we do is we utilize a liver pool uh, with water in it to get them used to splashing in the water and the water being below them. And we also have a bridge that we've set up to um, be as an example of how we would walk them on, that we're going to be next to them, not in there with them. Um, okay, maybe you're having trouble. I will go in there with you, but we're going to start learning how to do it next to it. So these are horses that were um, doing this for the first time. And I wanted you guys to kind of see how this can not only work on them physically and learning about this before we put them in our water treadmill, but also how it stimulates them mentally. Because a lot of times this is just very challenging for them, especially if it's stuff that they've never seen before. I won't get no, I won't get so that's just a quick little snippet to show you kind of how you can introduce the different elements while the horses are inside. And the owners will be appreciative of appreciative of this too, because you're, you're giving them just world experience. So our bridge is just a common bridge you see in ranch classes or um, trail classes. And what we did is we just added some clear uh, panels to either side and painted it yellow. And then the sides are silver. And that was with spray paint. And oftentimes it teaches them kind of that idea of stepping up into the machine. Um, the fact that the belt's going to be yellow or a different color and that it's going to feel this is wider than the machine, but that idea of, you know, that it's closed in. You can see that they both walked across with these horses. Uh, these were two horses that had been um, handled a lot. They're show horses, but this was definitely new to them. Um, so I didn't feel like they were going to run them over maybe like a thoroughbred that for the first time is um, thinking of it kind of like a start gate. Um, and so uh, we will kind of practice going through the bridge with them and then eventually being on the left hand side and teaching them how to lead up onto the bridge with us not in there with them. Uh, so this is something we might incorporate after they've had indoor turnout or after um, we've done hand walking or pole work with them. We have this just on the side of our arena and it's something we, we add in to their schedule just so they get used to it and it, it preps them for the water treadmill, especially our new ones. Um, and right now, we kind of got inundated with new horses where we have five uh, that came in in really over one weekend. And so this is a way for us to really get that group introduced to the water treadmill without taking them right to the water treadmill and keeping them paying attention even in those beginning days. Um, the next thing, I'm going to talk about fitness horses. So we decided to offer um, an equine fitness package for this winter. And the reason why is because, you know, I think for fitness cases in particular, um, winter can be a challenging time. So in this area, what I wanted to capitalize on is a lot of people don't have indoor arenas. Uh, so, okay, if you don't have an indoor arena, you might be able to ride definitely into December, but January and February are really tough. Or people are gone at shows and there are horses that they can't take with them. So if you're not taking those horses with you, what are they gonna do for the two weeks to however many weeks you're gone? Um, and so this fitness package, I wanted to give you a tangible idea of what it looks like. The thought process behind the fitness horses for winter, keeping them fit or even improving their fitness. So this is a new type of exercise on the Aquapacer. For a lot of them, they are fit from the aspect of being ridden, but being fit on the water tread is totally different. Uh, so it allows them 
to work on their fitness in a new and different way. It also allows us to work on their compensation patterns. So since a horse is tracking straight on the water treadmill, those, those patterns of compensation that the horses naturally do. So let's say that they've had issues with their left front and they push off high, harder on their right hind. And that causes them to work in a pattern where it's right hind to left front and they're pushing that direction, you're gonna see that right away on the water treadmill. And between changing the heights of the water, the speed of the treadmill, and um, the, the duration that they go, you're able to work on those compensation patterns. And that's really the coolest thing that I've seen with fitness horses. And I love hearing it from the owners after they're with us, um, what I want is that I want them for a month. And so that's why we did um, the buy three weeks, get one free, because, I really can get the most done in four weeks versus having them here for two, even three, because the first week is often training. And the protocol I, I teach people about very much is horse led. And this is where you, you can't rush it. You've got to make it so it's at a level that's comfortable for them and you give them time so that they, they willingly go onto the water tread and you willingly have them as part of part of that program. Um, the cross training exercise, like I talked about, I'm going to show you a video of that, but for fitness horses, you can use the height of the water and the resistance and buoyancy that that gives. And I have a previous webinar where I talk about all these different elements, and it's probably something I'll go over again in, um, this new year, but using the different heights within one session, once the horse is used to being on the water treadmill and comfortable with it, is a way to cross train the different parts of their body. Um, and like I said, I'll show you a video of that. So uh, from a business standpoint, um, horses not traveling to horse shows. Uh, we have a lot of clients that are going to take horses to Texas or to Florida, and part of their barn is not going. And those horses are either um, their owners are, are horse showing or the horses are not able to be worked as continually as they normally would. And so sending them for that month to kind of this winter, you know, winter camp of sorts where they get to go work on their fitness, but they're also um, going to be able to do some of our other uh, modalities as well. So for me, that was really looking at the water treadmill three days a week, which is um, I like to water tread horses no more than three to four times a week and to give them an off day, ideally in between. And then they're also going to be on our Vita floor for vibration therapy and then get magna wave twice a week to help with any sort of tightness or soreness that they're getting body soreness from doing this new type of exercise. Um, and really from a, a business standpoint as well. This is a marketing and revenue opportunity with fitness horses. Um, fitness horses are, are fun to have. They hopefully <laughs> are less challenging or less tedious than your, your rehab horses where you're, you're having to work a specific plan. But it's really fun where you are able to kind of sprinkle in these fitness horses to, to help, you know, fill in your numbers, bump up your revenue. Um, and what I have found is that from a fitness standpoint, having a package for people where they're able to understand what they're sending their horse to get um, is a great way to do it. And so um, really it's making fitness fun for these horses over the winter months versus limited turnout, um, not getting worked consistently, or it's so cold that the work they're getting done isn't ideal for their bodies. Uh, so in the next video, um, I talk a little bit, um, I want to show you that cross training idea and what it looks like. So I'll show you the video first. Um, this one doesn't have any fun music with it, but what I, I sped up this video so it wouldn't take the whole time of the session. But what I want you to see is, and I'll replay it, what we're doing with this horse is we're going ahead and raising the water all the way up at the beginning. So we're starting with the water with this horse, we're starting with it high. So this is just our normal fill all the way up. And then as we lower it down, we're actually leaving it there for different durations, either at hock height, knee height, fetlock height. Um, really, if you're between the knee and the hoof at any of those heights, you're gonna have a really challenging session for them. But what I love is 
the way they work, if depending on if they're coming up over the water or going through the water, is going to work joints and muscles differently. Um, and so in that session, we were doing hot water. Oftentimes, it's hot water for our fitness horses because we are wanting to have them increase their cardiovascular work. And we're wanting to work them in a way where we're not having to worry about inflammation in their lower legs like, like we might for um, some of our rehab horses. The next one I want to show you is two more fitness horses that we're working on two different things with these horses. Um, so the first one, her name's Electra, and I'll show you the video. So um, Electra is a warm blood that uh, has a lot of energy and personality. And what I wanted you to see first off is this is a really cold day. We have heaters in our room along with our barn being heated. So this was probably a single degree day, but it still stayed somewhere between ideally, unless we're opening a lot of doors, 40 to 55 in our barn. Um, but you can see as she works on the treadmill, the amount of steam coming off of it. So the water's right between, I'd say probably 95 to 98 degrees. And um, you can see how quickly that's gonna warm up her muscles, warm up her body, get her comfortable to start working. And then she's at a height where we're right above carpal, probably a little above hock, but not quite to stifle level. So she's working and she's a girl that can go about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, she has good fitness. Uh, she's able to work at a nice rate of speed. She's at about two to 2.2 .2 miles per hour. And so she's one of those that we're, we're working her fitness, we're working her. And as she gets going, what I would want to see from an ideal posture standpoint is that her head starts to come towards the middle and that she's working kind of in that straight line. What she's probably looking at in this video in particular is a horse in the indoor. Um, we have garage doors that close, but there are windows on them, so they will see them. And she's definitely a curious one. So we're working on her fitness while her owner is in Florida horse showing. Um, this one, this is Miss Foxy. Foxy is a 20-year-old quarter horse, and she is a great, great loving horse that um, really just needed, she knows her job. So it's not like during the winter she needs to learn her job more. It's that she needed a slow, steady pace to work where her fitness could stay, but she wasn't putting wear and tear on her body. So that's where you can see her rate is a lot slower. Um, she does a good job with her ideal body posture, but we have hers pretty high um, because we do want to keep her somewhat buoyant in the water while, while still having to work with that resistance. But I don't want her to work as hard as Electra. I want her to comfortably work at a slow, steady speed. So we're keeping her fitness, keeping her top line, but she's not putting any needed, unneeded wear and tear on her joints because she is an older horse. Um, we were able to really, you know, over that time frame, get her top line to look much better and her range of motion improved drastically um, with that warm water. So those are two examples of fitness horses. Another thing we'll do with our fitness horses um, is work them in hot water. And then we will go ahead and drain the hot water that we have, um, switch the system over, which takes about 48 seconds, and then raise up to um, about carpal knee height, um, maybe a little bit higher if we need to, the cold salt water, and we'll ice their legs at the end, either with them standing. So with Foxy, we would let her just rest and stand in it. Electra doesn't know how to stand still. So for her, um, we would add that into her program. So we know we, she can go 15 to 20 minutes. So maybe we went ahead and did 12 to 13 minutes with the water, um, with filling and draining of the hot water. We drained it all the way. She stood quietly while we switched the system over, which is something we trained her on. And then we filled it up with cold and did about five more minutes cold. Um, and that way after her session, she had nice iced legs um, and really was a complete session. And for Foxy, uh, it's something that her legs can have fill just naturally because of her age. And her legs really consistently looked a lot smaller. Um, so her owners were really pleased with that. Um, so just two examples of fitness horses that are there for different reasons, but can still be worked consistently in a fun way um, during those winter months when it's really cold and they're able to come in and work on their fitness the way they need it in a customized way. 
Any questions about utilizing it for fitness horses? You can um, unmute yourself or also put them in the chat. Um, I'm going to move on to my rehab horses. Uh, so rehab horses are, are another big part of our, uh, our setup here. We just do rehab and fitness. We don't have any other programs going on here other than our own personal horses. And so uh, we're able to have a nice number of horses here uh, that I like to keep somewhere around 10, um, give or take a few. So uh, we decided to go ahead and do an equine rehab package uh, for our, our fitness package. People really, really liked and said that um, even though our pricing is a la carte, is there anything, especially trainers and and when they're coming, you know, and they have a horse that's injured and maybe it's not going well at the home barn or because of winter, uh, taking care of this rehab horse is going to be really, really hard in their unheated barn. Um, could we put something together that we think is maybe a rehab package that hits most rehab horses and then we can add on or change it as needed? So that's what we did. And um, we put together where they would be hot or cold water treadmilling twice a week. Vita flooring every day. Um, we have a class four laser that we said we would use twice a week and then MagnaWave once a week. So we have other modalities here that we would add in as well that are a little bit more specific to the horse. Like not all rehab horses would need to be shock waved or if a horse has something in particular that's going on, we have the tool for it, but this would give people kind of a starting off point of if my horse is injured or my injured horse that isn't getting better, where am I going to start price wise so I, I can know what I'm getting into? Um, so I love the water treadmill because I'm able to stay on track with rehab plans and getting results. So winter does not stop us with our rehab horses. Um, we're able to keep going. And the biggest thing with rehab horses that is important and challenging is having them in a controlled environment. So even when um, a horse, you know, they might be coming off stall rest. And they come to us, they might be at a point where they can hand walk, but they don't have an indoor arena, so they can't hand walk them indoor. Maybe they're hand walking them in the aisle and it's not going well uh, because the horse is pent up. It's nice to have a controlled environment where with training them, um, with our protocol and using the elements that we have to get them used to it, we can put them in the water treadmill. And some of these rehab horses, we actually train to have the water fill up while they're standing still so that the water can be above the area of injury. So let's say they have a suspensory tear. Okay, we don't want any, at this point where they're at, we don't want any um, really weight or resistance going against that area. So we want to put get that horse as buoyant as possible before we start moving them. Or if you have a horse with a fracture um, that is at kind of that, you know, point in rehab where it's a little scary. Um, we train them as well. Okay, we got to raise this water up so that you can work in a safe, controlled way. And that's where we're going to have the water height. The speed is probably going to stay at that slower, controlled pace because we're not trying. Fitness is going to happen, but that's not why they're there. And then the duration is really going to be something that uh, you'll be working with the vet when you work on this rehab plan, but overtaxing rehab horses is, is really, it's important to pay attention to that. Um, most horses with rehab have turnout restrictions. So even if, you know, it's a nice day, it's not too wet, it's not icy and the other horses can go outside. Generally speaking, our rehab horses at some point in their rehab cannot go out and turn out because again, they're going to make bad choices. They need to stay in a controlled system and program so that we make sure that they're getting better. And I always remind owners and remind myself that, you know, not having that turnout is a, a short term kind of restriction that for long term in the long term will really be beneficial to them. So sometimes it's hard, you know, to have horses on stall rest or with turnout restrictions, because they definitely want to get outside, but um, having a way for them to, you know, keep their sanity when they're stuck inside and get them on a program where they're rehabbing and water treading consistently is going to help you where that turnout is not going to be their way of getting out those crazies. They're going to be able to go and have something that is consistent for their workout where they're going to feel good. Um, and then the availability of hot and cold water, regardless of outside temps. So this is where having a heated space or our heated barn, um, the tanks, you know, being able to stay at certain temperatures, no matter what the outside temp is, that allows us to have those controlled pieces for our rehab horses. And so some examples that I have for you, 
I don't know why my pictures didn't show up. These are awesome too. Let me see. Let's see why they didn't. Hmm. Stinker. Let's see if I reload it. It's part of me all the way over. One sec, guys. These are fun because it's a wound. Gotta love some wound pictures. Let me get there. There we go. Okay, so this is a horse that came in um, from a barn after he got kicked in the leg by another horse, unfortunately. And the wound at the top, uh, this is pretty soon after he came in. The wound at the top went all the way down to the bone, um, but it was able to be stitched up and there were not any fractures. And then the kick on the bottom is just in a stinker of a spot, um, but was able to be stitched up with an area left with a little bit of a hole so that they could have drainage out of that area. So wound care in the winter months, especially at this farm particular where they do not have a wash rack with hot water to be, you know, cleaning this wound out. And this was something that in order to not get infected was going to need a lot of care. Um, over the last, I think it's been three or so months, I think he came in November, December. Yeah, no, it was probably end of October. So we were still pretty nice then, um, but we had to continue working him. And yesterday I took a picture as uh, he's actually able to go outside in a small paddock now, which is fun for him. Uh, but you can see his wounds have closed up quite beautifully. Uh, and I really would say all of that is due to the fact of the cold salt water. So not in the acute phase. Um, the first two weeks, we didn't have him in the cold salt water. It was really keeping... Um, infection down, um, icing that leg, uh, cold hosing that leg, uh, getting things to simmer down and getting the inflammation down. And then once those were starting to close up a little bit, we were able to use the cold salt water. And I have seen numerous times with, with cases that I've had the work we can get done with the cold salt water of not only keeping range of motion, but getting those wounds to close up. Uh, so you can see just over a few months, like his leg looks dramatically different. And I think I have, yes, a video of him. Oh no, this is not. Way to ruin my fun. This is the next one I'm gonna show you about. Um, so with that horse, the big thing we saw with his leg that was problematic with the wound was that his range of motion with that lower wound was so um, tight and, and small. So he would take a very careful step with that right leg and then, I'm sorry, with that left leg and then push off with his right. So what was cool was as he got more comfortable in the cold salt water and his leg started to hurt less and less, um, we were able to get that range of motion back as well, uh, where this was not game ending for, he's just a little Palomino pony. Um, it wasn't a game ender for him. Uh, he's going to be able to go back to work and uh, his leg really, you can see there's still a little bit of swelling down in that ankle, but like overall the swelling has gone down so significantly. And the other thing is, is we never had infection. Um, the, the osmotic effect, you know, it pulls out the inflammation with that, that cold salt water, but it also helps to keep it clean and to pull out any kind of debris or anything in there. And so we did wrap him at night. Uh, but overall, this wound was open um, during the day. And after, you know, he would get cold salt water treaded, he'd go on the Vita floor and dry off and, you know, help with reducing inflammation there. So he had a really great system that worked for him. So the fun part is um, we got a, <laughs> a cow that we're rehabbing. Um, we have a cow actually out of, he's a steer because he's a, a castrated male, but we love to call him a cow. Um, we have Dwight, uh, that came to us from Michigan and this is the second time, um, we've rehabbed Dwight unbridled has. So he came to us first in Illinois and now he came to us here in Arkansas and Dwight lives at Barn Sanctuary, which is a farm animal sanctuary for injured farm animals. And Dwight was um, unfortunately 
mauled by a coyote as a calf and kind of just left to heal on his own. And so his right leg never healed up, his right hind leg. And he, barn, uh, barn Sanctuary got him surgery. In, he was about a year old when they got him. And he has some metal plates in his leg, but he is such a good water treader. And um, I'll show you a little bit of him moving in the water tread. Oh, this is, okay, so I had this wrong. So this is the little pony. Okay, my bad. Um, okay, so this is what I wanted to show you about him. So when he had the wounds, um, you can see where, let me start that again, where he was tighter. I think I am right. Wait, hold on, I gotta look. These all blend together. Okay, so his left hind was what the wounds were on. And you can see he was able to get back pretty good range of motion. This is, I think we took this in December is my guess. Um, but he still was shorter on that right hind, kind of pushing off for that left hind. So his, his gait was not even yet, but he was getting that range of motion that we wanted. The other thing you can see is because it's cold salt water, um, and especially because it's winter, we kept it right at about hock height so that the cold water was not splashing up on him. Um, we would not want to put him in shock by putting that too high. Um, so it was really important, the height of that. So now I'm going to go to Dwight. There. Hey, Katie. Yeah. On that one, did you say you did not put him in the treadmill for the first little bit when you got him? Yeah. So his wounds were you know, in, in the acute phase, when he first came, his wounds were pretty open. And the one, let me go back, the one on the, the bottom one, where on the in, no, was it the medial side? No, it was the outside, where they kept uh, a little bit of a hole open to let that drain out, that would have been quite painful in the cold salt water. So not okay. all wounds. I, so some wounds are at a place where even though they're new, they're not so open or gaping um, that I would go ahead and put them right in the cold salt water. Or if I had a horse that, um, you know, had lymphangitis, cellulitis, you know, you see that those ooze and they're open a little bit, but that's where you want to go ahead and put them in. This one, the, the top one, because it went all the way to the bone um, and the bottom one, because it wasn't completely closed and his pain of this was pretty high. He was hurting. Um, we gave it about two to two and a half weeks of it, you know, him being on SMZs, us making sure there was no infection, making sure there was no, um, he had gotten x-rayed, but like, okay, it was so swollen, making sure there was no fracture there um, before we had him start working. But mostly it was for pain management. I just don't think he could have handled the cold salt water at the beginning. And so we kept it really quiet, stall rest, cold hosing, uh, the first two to two and a half weeks and then went ahead and put them in the cold salt water and there were no problems. Um, so I wouldn't say that's with every wound. I think that's where you defer to a vet and um, you really find out, okay, how comfortable are we with salt going in or near this wound and are they ready to? Uh, because with this one, we knew we had to get him kind of over that initial hump and through the pain um, where he really didn't want to walk on it. Um, so I was glad we waited with him and we were still able to get the results we wanted with that cold salt water on those wounds and getting the wounds to shrink and close up. That's a great question. Anyone else have questions? Wounds are definitely something you'll see all the time, but in the winter specifically, because if you don't have, you know, the access to running water and a heated barn, um, if you're in a cold area, just getting those wounds healed would be nearly impossible. Uh, next up, so we'll get to Dwight. Um, so Dwight, like I said, Dwight, um, this is now his third time, let's see, 2018 to 2024. So he's been with them for six years. Am I doing my math right? Um, just about six years. And so uh, he rehabbed the first time at a different place that had a water treadmill. And um, now this is his second time rehabbing with us. The fun thing is Dwight's like a famous steer for Barn Sanctuary. Uh, they call him the aqua cow because he actually had an episode on Animal Planet uh, where they talked about him water treading. But what's cool with him, first of all, you can see that uh, we we hold him actually on both sides with the lead ropes. Um, he is one where he can kind of really flip his head around. And so we found that he does best when we keep him right in the middle like that. Um, and so the water for him is hot. 
and all the way up because we want to keep as much weight off of that hind right leg and give him the buoyancy because his hips are very uneven. And so in this one, what you can see is that right hind, he actually has to walk a little bit on his toe and then push off the left hind. But what's cool is as he worked last time, he actually was able to get flat footed on that right hind because it fixed that compensation pattern so much along with other therapies, his comfort level, his hips actually started and his pelvis started to even out more and he was able to get weight onto that right hind. So kind of fun, Dwight brings us so much joy and laughter. Um, water treading cows is actually really easy. So if you ever have anyone in your area that wants their cow water treaded, do not fear. They're easier than a lot of horses to train to it. Um, but there is Dwight, uh, just to, to show you him right now that we have. And so with that, those are some examples of using the water treadmill um, in the winter months and how we're using it. I want to open it up for the last 10 minutes to any sort of questions that you may have or situations that you're running into that are challenging you either with rehab or fitness horses. Before I do that, um, if anyone needs to take off, I understand. I hope you stay for the, the question portion. Um, but I did want to say thank you. Our next webinar will be in March. And uh, let me know if there's a topic you want to cover. Otherwise, I'm just going to give you something that is, is plaguing me here that I want to talk about. And um, more than anything, um, go ahead, check out my website on bridal-equine.com or on social media. You can find me. I'm often posting videos of stuff that uh, we're dealing with or having fun with or uh, horses that are coming in. And I like to share success stories on there as well to kind of give the full picture of how a rehab situation or a fitness situation can look. So there's definitely resources you can find on there. I have massage videos on my website that are free for you to access as well. And then Hudson has a uh, library of all the other webinars that we've gone through. So thank you for joining me today. But first, before we end, how about any questions or um you know, things that you're struggling with that you need help on um, that myself or others can help you with. Feel free to talk or put it in the chat. Yeah, Chelsea. So I guess for me, um, we do typically race horses. Um, I don't get a lot of show horses. We're a lot of thoroughbred, like primarily thoroughbred race horses. Um, yeah. So I guess for us, like we're a bit seasonal because, you know, our typical clientele, um, everybody's, you know, either in hot springs or in Louisiana or they're in Florida or, you know, they're, they're not here during the winter. So, um, I guess it was nice to see your fitness thing. Cause do you ever market that towards people to retain clientele through the winter time? Yeah, or, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think I would encourage you to venture out just from racehorses, especially when there are down. Have one warm blood in the barn right now. So yeah, I mean, you're gonna have you have the abilities to do others. I think it's good if you have a niche that you have the networking in. Um, mm -hmm. That it's good to just you know stay in your niche. You you've got people that you know and people that have used you, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think when there is downtime, yeah, I would push that fitness piece or getting the word out. So somebody has a rehab horse, you know, they may not be able to get into the other places. Like mm -hmm. if you have a rehab horse that needs to get in now, um, because they just got out of colic surgery, like you don't really want to wait a month on a wait list. And so you want people to know that there's other options out there. And the other piece I would hit on too, how many horses are you ideally going to have in your program? I can have up to 20. Our main barn houses 12, um, but okay. we have two other barns on the property. So one thing you also could look at is marketing yours as more of like a boutique customized experience. Um, a lot of times with those bigger places, it is very much like a, they, they have tailored programs, but it, because they're running 30, 40 horses a day, um, mm -hmm. plus having trailer ins, a lot of times that customization piece is harder to do just with staffing and, you know, time. Um, so you might be able to also, you know, show like, hey, we have 10 horses here, but, you know, you could, your rehab horse, we could really do exactly what they need. I have the staffing for it. Or maybe it's knowledge that you have that's specific to you. Um, I think the fact that you work with racehorses that in and of itself takes a lot of understanding and knowledge. Um, I mean, I have 
a five-year-old off the track that's here that's going to do the um, thoroughbred, you know, new new job program, you know, at Kentucky, in Kentucky uh, this yeah. spring. And he's here for fitness while his owner's in Florida. And even at five, you know, and he's only been under saddle for a little bit, like, he's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get a quarter horse, please. Like, you know, and real cold. So it's yeah, <laughs> it takes a special skill set. Yeah. And so capitalize on, you know, how you're training these young, high strung, easily, you know, spooked horses to the water tread, because I think you have a lot of knowledge to share in the fact of you have to do that very thoughtfully and safely. Um, and, you know, really utilizing it so they understand the pieces because they are so athletic um, that, you know, you can't really, you can't manhandle one that's freaked out. Uh, you're going to have to, you know, really, really get them to understand it. But I think you could open it up to that fitness idea to other horses during those downtimes when those horses are gone, or if those racehorse owners have horses that aren't going to those other places that they want to keep fit that maybe they're not, you know, someone that they want to take along or they're coming off an injury and they could send them to you while they're gone. That's often a really big relief for those people. Otherwise they're just going to kick them out in the field. Mm -hmm. So if they're willing to spend the money, it's a great option for when they come back, like, Hey, here's your polished horse. When you come back, there's nothing better than that. So your pricing that you have that $500 a week, that's like 71 a day. Is that normal for your area? Is that why you guys pitch that? Or how do you determine the pricing of these things? Isn't that, that's like the hundred dollar question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's hard. So my pricing in Chicago, as far as compared to the United States was high. Uh, I would say that that area I like to look at what I use, first of all, is how much is a private lesson, uh, like a one hour private lesson for someone. And that will kind of give you an idea of <clears throat> what would be appropriate for your water tread pricing um, and just a, a like one off idea. So in Illinois, that's somewhere between like 75 to hundred dollars in the Chicago suburbs for a one hour private. Mm -hmm. In Arkansas, no, uh, you know, there's a lot less there's not as many programs and, it, and there's more um, diversity amongst disciplines, but we're probably looking more in that 50 to $75 range. And then from there, when I was at my last barn, the board went directly to the barn owner because I was just leasing space at that barn. So I had no control over the boarding price, which was probably the highest in the area. It was $2,500 a month, but the facility was great. Um, and so I was able to run my rehab center out of there, but that did, you know, for certain people, the starting price of 2,500, that, that kind of priced them out. And then the therapies were all separate from that because that was the part that I maintained and managed here because I'm partnering with Pinnacle and we're doing it out of this location. We have a little bit more say on the board piece of it and board in this area generally runs between, I would say 600 to a thousand. So probably about a thousand less than Chicago per month um, on average. And what we did was take, okay, what are the pieces of our fitness program that take uh, employees? So we have employees specifically that clean stalls. Okay, how much do we need to break even on that? Great, because you really don't make money boarding horses as you all probably know. So what do we need to break even on that? And then the water treadmill is our most employee heavy piece. So training them for it, you have to have two people at a time to run it, in my opinion. And I really don't want it any other way, your main person and your support person. And so two people, there's prepping the horse, there's letting them dry afterwards. So that's our most work intensive part. Okay, so then Adding in the other stuff that's part of that fitness program, the Vita floor, we have a full stall. That's our, our Vita floor. So by putting them on it, it just takes putting them on it and taking them off. I don't have to have anyone standing there with them. And also that allows them to dry after the water treadmill. So it works for us too. Um, so adding in the Vita floor, the, the, you know, benefits that they get from it and the amount of work we have to put into it are, are, not equal, you know, like we're able to put them on it. They get the benefit, they eat hay, 
we can leave them for 20 minutes once they're trained on it and it's fine. Same thing with the MagnaWave. Um, the MagnaWave is something I've had for a decade and, you know, it's already re the return on investment I've already gotten. So for me, the MagnaWave is just kind of one of those things where like it offers great benefits. It's easy to train people on it and it's something they can do while they're, let's say I have three or four people working that day, the two people are water treading, the one person's prepping horses and taking horses to the Vita floor, the other person can just be mag waving horses for 20 minutes or 30 minutes at a time. Um, and so it's something that's easy to kind of add in or, oh, we're grooming them or waiting for them to dry. Let's throw the MagnaWave loops on them or let's hold the MagnaWave on their leg where they're having an issue. So we tried to balance work intensive with less work intensive pieces to find a price point that we felt was palatable to this area and fifteen hundred dollars for a month for all that stuff is a great deal and we also want to be able to start showcasing the type of fitness that we can get done when people send their horses here for a month so there's that added benefit of as we start up even though i have the experience in rehab but not in this area um i can say and, you know, or post all about fitness cases, but once people see it and feel it and start talking about it, um, that also has a added incentive or dollar value to it as well. Um, and so for us, it was about the 1500 was like, okay, we break even on board. We need to cover our costs for the water tread. And then the other pieces we could just break even on or lose a little bit on because, they're, they're not overly work intensive. And when we came up with the 1500, it was like, okay, this is, this is comfortable for fitness horses, along with talking to trainers in the area of what would be, some people were like, oh, that's too high. You know, it's, it's just too high. Can be, okay. Well, you're never going to hit everybody. Um, but at the same time, we have to be realistic to the wear and tear we're putting on our aquapacer and the amount we're paying our employees. Um, and so 1500 was an amount that right now, uh, the number of, it also is nice because we knew we'd get a good number. So I have somewhere between like six and eight fitness horses at a time. Like those are easy in my mind to just like, okay, we're just pushing them through. Like we know exactly what we have to do with them. And we know on average how it looks like the first week we're training, we may have one or two that start water treading, but it's easy to put them into our rehab horses schedule. And so rehab horses are much more tedious where generally speaking, except for the five-year-old thoroughbred, <laughs> you know, is a little bit more of a challenging horse to work with um, because he is just off the track. Like we have an 18 year old, you know, like glorified lesson horse. That's a saint. He got trained up in one day and he's treading and he's just a pure pleasure to have, you know, he's just precious and we're going to keep him so that for his kid come spring, you know, he actually looks better, feels better, all of that. So, you know, the fitness horses for me are ways to fill in gaps, keep, you know, keep the momentum going of the horses that we're helping. And then it's equally beneficial to the owners that in the winter time, you know, I want to be seen as a resource of, I can't ride my horse right now because we only have an uncovered outdoor. I'm going to send my horse over to Pinnacle or, you know, we're all headed to Florida or we're headed wherever. I don't, I'm going to close down my barn. So I'm not going to have any employees there. They're going with me. I'm going to send these two horses over to them because I know they'll be taken care of and I'll get them back at the end and they'll look great. Um, and those, that's kind of where that price point came from, given the fact that it's on the higher end as far as board would go, but the amount they're getting out of it, the 1500 is, is very doable for people in all disciplines. So we've had, you know, our barrel racers, we've had our ranch horses, we've had our jumpers, we've had our off track thoroughbred, you know, we've kind of had a little bit of everything. And so that $1,500 was a comfortable price point for us. So when you do you do ship ins like you'll do a la carte like single sessions or like how do you charge if people are just choosing yeah. a certain amount? Good question. So we are going to start allowing ship ins mm -hmm. soon. My caveat is that they have to come at least for two weeks. One thing we're offering as part of our fitness program is if your horse does the month long fitness program, they're eligible to come do pollens. Because the biggest thing is they have to already be trained to do the Hollands or it is such a headache. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't, 
And for that like rare horse that just gets on and doesn't care about it, it's fine. But for a majority of them, they need the time to be trained on it and they need the time to get comfortable with it. And then once they do it consistently, they remember it. I mean, even the cow remembers it. Like we got him on and he was like, I love this thing. You know, like they remember enjoying it. And so for us, there's that added, added incentive of like, if your horse does this program, you're going to be on our first, you know, slot of people. Cause we're not opening it up to everybody. Um, you know, we'll let you come have priority to come in. And so for this one trainer in particular, she was like, great. I have a four horse trailer. I could bring four horses at a time. I'm going to have my people do the fitness program. And then she can bring them over and have them do that once a week on Mondays or whatever day we have it open. And I have found with Hollins that if you sell those as a package, I do think that is nice from the standpoint of just doing it once every once in a while, they're not going to see any change and the owners are going to be somewhat disappointed where if they come on a weekly or a biweekly basis, um, they're going along with the program they're doing at home, they will see um, improvement. And so that's where, you know, selling them in, you know, 10 or 12 or 15 um, or buy 10, get two free, however you want to do it. You want them to come consistently because otherwise you're kind of wasting your time and their time. Um, but Holland's, I generally give an hour per Holland. That's on the high end. Uh, I'm sure if you talk to Spy Coast, like their Hollins, I th I know they do a lot of I think thoroughbred Hollins, um, but they have two machines. But their Holland machine, um, I think they're able to do them a lot quicker. Uh, but they oftentimes um, places will also uh, sedate horses to do it. I don't sedate. Um, I just don't. And so I have found that. I don't want a program where I have to sedate them. They don't move as well when they're sedated. And if you train them, if you have the time to train them well, your rare horse may have to be sedated for their own safety and rehab because we don't want them to hurt themselves. But I do this quite successfully over all these years and don't sedate. Um, so that that's kind of how I'm running my program. And I'd rather give a little bit more time and patience than drug them and speed it up. So that's just my two cents on it. Um, but I think you know, realistically, uh, if you have a trainer bringing multiple horses, it's easier, um, where when people are just bringing one horse, it's, it's usually more timely <laughs> where if someone's bringing three or four horses, you're kind of working those through as you go. I will overlap people. So, um, when I'm done with the horse, the art, other horse is already getting prepped by one of my employees, uh, just to try to keep that system going. And then I do often, uh, if I can have them go on the Vita floor as well, it's just a good way to kind of have them relax and dry off before they get back on the trailer. Mm -hmm. Does Hudson have like a pricing chart where they have suggested, like if you're buying a new unit, like how do you get your return back on a certain scale? Yeah, so they have an Excel uh, document that I've gone through with some of my consulting clients where they they do have you input numbers based on, I mean, everything from how much does water cost? How much does electricity cost? Are you leasing the space? Um, how much, you know, are you paying per month on your water tread or did you pay it off already? How much are you going to charge per session? How much are you paying employees? They do have a sheet that breaks all that down. And I feel like it is pretty comprehensive. Um, but in the end, it has to be, I always tell people don't cheapen the water tread to get people in because you'll get resentful. It's a lot of work. It's an expensive piece of equipment. If a horse breaks it, you can't just buy the part on Amazon, probably. Uh, we had a horse that broke ours and uh, one of the tension rods and, you know, Hudson came out and fixed it, but it took two weeks, you know, so we were without our water tread for two weeks. And, you know, it would be really annoying if, uh, you know, if that was because I was giving, I, I didn't have a horse properly trained and I was doing it for too cheap. I would have been annoyed. Like now I've got to have Hudson out now it's under warranty and they came and fixed it. But, you know, there was lost revenue during that time. Um, and I think another big thing is like the fact, even though there's places around you that have it, it's still a tool that most barns do not have. 
And, you know, there is a lot of time that goes into changing out your water, cleaning your filters, like all that has to be put into play too. So for this area, somewhere between 50 to $75, like that private lesson for an hour is where I'm kind of basing my prices off of. And then in Chicago, it was 75 to 100. And then in, you know, Montana, it's going to look different than it is in California. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with just the going rates of things, even though, you know, the machine itself is not going to cost different. Uh, it just has to do with where you're at. And um, what the nice thing is, is like you have easy comps to look at, mm -hmm. but you still have to do what's right for you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I had, I was talking to somebody recently, they got quoted for 60 days they call, at Spy Coast. They call it their, their ice salt water package. Okay. So for 60 days of that, it was eight grand. Uh-huh. <laughs> what are they doing with them? Uh, yes. Yeah. Wait, were they putting them in the box that they have? They were, they were calling it their their ice salt water package, whatever, and it was eight grand for 60 days. To have the horse living on site for rehab, whatever. It was it was eight grand. <laughs> so the prices have gone up. Yeah. Um I like I like Spy Coast. They run I just like that facility and um, I've been there and, and talked with them. And I like, I like the lady that runs it a lot. She is immensely knowledgeable. That is an operation though. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a lot going on, a lot of employees. Um, they did everything. I mean, there's a vet on staff. It's awesome. You know? Um, so there are pieces that, you know, people send, I've had people that are like, no, I'm spending my, sending my horse to spy coast. I know I'm there. I've sent young horses there to be developed. I just want them to have them. And I'm like, great. You know, like to each their own. Like, again, there's enough horses to go around. I think that that is something you could capitalize on to market to a different demographic, especially the racehorse people, because they're not going to spend that. Um, I kind of equate racehorse people to like polo people. Yeah. <laughs> they have a lot of horses, you know, like they have, they're not, they are, they care, they care immensely for them. It's not that, but they're not like pets. You know, they're like, they have 10, 12, 20 horses. So like each horse can't get, you know, a special blanket and, a, you know, you're kind of like a kid in a big family. And mm -hmm. so they have to be more economical. Uh, so I think there's the ability to, you're not running such a big operation. So you could do a price point that works for you. Um, I also think you can capitalize on the fact that you want an above brown unit versus a pool. Mm -hmm. People really are starting to learn how much better above ground units are uh, for the horses. And um, like I said, I went into that really in depth. Uh, I think it was it the last presentation I did in November. Shiloh was there. I can't remember. It's it's on the library. Um, but you can do so much more with the above ground treadmills. And I also have. Um, gosh, are they? I think they're in Elizabethtown. How far is that from Lexington? From well, I'm in South Vice, so we're like right by Bluegrass Parkway. So E Town for me is like 25 minutes. Okay. So I have um a client that I went and trained them um on their water tread. They're called 5T Farms. Lovely family. Um, and they got their water tread in the fall. And they're barrel racers, and they weren't really sure the clientele that they were going to, they thought it was going to be mostly Western. Um, and they've just exploded. I mean, they're, they're amazing. And the, they're getting all different kinds of horses in. And I think that's where, again, you have a nice number of horses there that it's kind of like in Florida, like you can, you can accommodate more of these facilities in a smaller area. Um, but they're a facility that, they were thought they were going to do more rehab and they've done a ton of fitness and, you know, they've only been open a handful of months and they're doing wonderfully. Um, and I think it's someone you could reach out to and even, you know, start, touch base with. Um, and I'd be happy to connect you because I really do feel like, and I did this with massage too. Like we do not have to cut each other down to get business. Like we just don't. Um, and they, you know, I like sharing my knowledge and my experience because I had to go through a lot of this alone when I first started this out and there just weren't a lot of rehab centers and it was, it was hard and lonely. And now there are more and more and more people doing this. And 
I love the community aspect of it. And so, you know, the, the Bailey family is someone I could definitely connect you with. And, you know, it could be, I love referring people out. So like, I might have a horse that, my gosh, I don't think I'm the right fit. I think you need a bet on staff. This horse has some serious issues that it has to be something really serious for me to be like, Oh, I don't think so. Or like, Oh, I have this two-year-old that, you know, has never been touched and has this going on. I'm like, Oh gosh, I don't know if I'm set up for that or a stallion. I'm not set up for a stallion at this barn. Um, so then I refer them out and you have to know other people to refer them out because the moment you start referring people out, the moment they're going to refer horses to you. And, you know, we, we all can accommodate different, different needs. And so like in Illinois, I had a vet that ran a small rehab center. And if it was a post-surgical that I was just not comfortable with, or a wound that I didn't know if we could handle, I'm like, you need to go to Dr. Iverson's. Let me connect you with her. Um, or, you know, someone that I'm like, oh, I can't accommodate you now, given that I'm in Arkansas. I don't think the horse should travel that far. Let me give you a bunch of other ones that you can contact. Um, and so that's where I think, you know, taking that that higher road and working with the people around you, you're really going to enjoy it uh, because it's it's something you guys love that you're doing that, you know, if you price it appropriately, like you aren't having to, you know, push other people down to get to get the horses in because they're there. Um, and the more educated the population is, the more they're going to see the value in it. So you have a nicely educated audience. Yeah, <laughs> that piece is hard. <laughs> Yeah. I've done that now. This is my second time doing that and educating people on it and the why you would want to, you know, prehab your horse with fitness or why you would want to spend money rehabbing your horse so that they rehab correctly or we fix other issues that are going on. There is a whole education piece to that that takes time to establish mm -hmm. that luckily you've kind of had the people that have done the legwork for you. But yeah, eight grand is astronomical. Yep. They didn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be wanting like golden ice on my horse's legs. Right. <laughs> and I really like mine. And I'm like, dude, you don't yeah. need that good of ice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think doing some secret shopping would be good too. Yeah. Um, if you have places that you can connect with and talk to about pricing, that would be nice. But feel free to have a friend call and, mm -hmm. you know, secret shop it a little bit so you can know what the going rates are as well. Um, I'm always happy to share my price sheets and you know, if other barns are willing to share theirs, because again, I think we want to make sure people are pricing this appropriately because that helps all of us. Mm -hmm. If somebody cheapens it, that, that hurts our business too. Well, I won't monopolize the time anymore. No, great <laughs> questions. Great <laughs> questions. Anybody else? Shyla, I see the new baby. I'm like really in love. The last time I saw Shyla, she was like super pregnant and <laughs> ready to pop. Mm -hmm. The baby looks She's precious. Oh, oh hi, babes. Oh, 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 what about me? I know. It's so hard being a baby. Uh, oh, Riley. Riley. Congratulations. Yeah. January 3rd. Oh, gosh. You are like fresh out of it. <laughs> Hour and a half labor. <laughs> oh, are you sleeping? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Okay, good. That's, yeah. a, that's a big part. When you can start getting sleep again. You're like a human again. Oh, yeah. congratulations. How's everything Thanks. going? Do you have rehab horses or are you taking a break? No, I'm just taking a break. I'm hoping good. at the end of February, beginning of March, I'm I can of start again. Um, I had to turn a warm blood down because they wanted to come to yesterday. And I was just like, I, I can't yet. Yeah like it's 20 okay. days postpartum. No, yeah. <laughs> know your nose uh and and especially like if you can't safely do the work or it's just not the right time like I always say there's a power in knowing your nose so that when you say yes you you know you want to say yes um and right. the hardest part for me is to turn down especially a rehab horse because I'm always like oh I want to help I want to help this horse uh but like yeah. we're full right now I can't take any yeah. more horses or my, you know, employees are going to pull out their hair. And so, okay. you know, right now it's okay to be like, you know, I, I have a wait list, but I know this horse is leaving this date. Like I just had a horse leave yesterday so I can take this horse on Saturday. You know, it, it's, it's always a moving thing. And so it is okay to say no, especially when, you know, your family, I think family comes first. And, uh, you know, I think that is important and it'll make you enjoy it that much more when you get to go back to it. 
That's yes, awesome. exactly. That's what I was thinking too. Like, oh, yeah, and you have no so travel hard to Canada, being being as cold as it is. Like those winter months, yeah. they need you. Well, we just got out of a minus, like about minus forty Celsius snap. Oh, and in a couple days, it's supposed to get up to plus seven. Okay, not not cool. No, that's so no. bad for You're us. At least getting like, into positives, but yeah, no, it's so I'm bad. You, moving south, it was the the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do love Lexington though too. I have always looked there. I've always, you know, who what horse girl doesn't want to live in Lexington? Right. <laughs> romantic. And then um Utah has great weather. Like Christy has great weather out in Utah most of the time. And then um We're 60 today. Oh, nice. Okay. It yeah, is right like though, so that sucks. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. And then um Mary, where were you? Oh, Texas. That's right. Yeah. No, Texas, you guys, other than ice storms do, do pretty well. Um, and so, no, I think, I think it's a great thing to talk about as far as, you know, uh, when I consult with people, yes, it's consulting about the water treadmill and either, you know, if they're going to get it or will it work in their area, but so much of it that I see is missing is that business piece, um, that I just kind of figured out, on my own. And now I want to be able to share that with other people because you often wear a lot of hats when you are running your own rehab center. And I would assume most of us didn't get into horses because we love business. <laughs> we got into horses because we love horses, uh, but there's this whole business piece. And so a lot of um, what I'm going over with people is, you know, consent forms and pricing and marketing and, you know, how do you intake a horse and what do you need to know and how do you put that to, you know, an effective system so you're not, um, you know, spending too much time on the phone or on your computer so that you can do the stuff that you want to do. And how do you set up a schedule for the horses and how are you going to get people in the door and what does that look like? And, you know, how do you utilize social media versus print resources and, and all that stuff. And what I love is that there's framework that works for everybody, but the answers are different based on where you're at, the population, um, how much education they have on it. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of those things that, the aqua pacer, I've said this before, I can rehab horses without the aqua pacer. I prefer not to because <laughs> of what I can do with the water tread and the horses I can take on and the, the stuff that I can get done and the time frame I can get it done uh, is just exponentially better. And so um, that's where I want people to have this tool and be, be able to utilize this tool, but also have a successful business because it's a huge investment and you have to have a plan in place. So you are not pulling out your hair doing this. And so you're not doing it all hours of the day, um, which, which horses kind of are, but we can put systems in place and have things working in a way where it is functioning as a, you know, a, a business that is able and manageable and sustainable. Um, cause I've been at the point where I've been strung out and, and worn out and, and not wanting to do it anymore. And that's when I realized something had to change. Um, and you know, there's still those days, but overall, like I know what has to be put into place so that a horse can come in on Saturday and it's just like, yeah, your horse can come in. We have a spot. Here's what you need to fill out. Here's the, the plan. Uh, here's what I need from you. Here's the check I need from you, all of that. And it's just easy and laid out. Um, and then when that horse comes in, we know the training protocol, we know what they're going to do with them. Um, and so that just makes everyone's life a lot easier. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. I'm available as people need me. Um, you can always, uh, you know, obviously join the webinars. You can send me an email anytime on bridled equine two at gmail.com. Um, you can message me on social. Um, you can text me. I gave you your, my phone number, uh, in the email. You can try to call me, but usually I have either a kid or a horse next to me. So <laughs> it's, it's nearly impossible. Uh, but texting, I can usually get to within the day and, um, I'm here to help and be a resource and cheerlead as much as you need. Uh, because I just love that horses are getting the healing and help that I need. And that's really what I want to see. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in training or consulting or anything like that, reach out to me. Um, it's something I love doing. And um, what I'm proud of is seeing these people that put the work in and now they're up and running and they have their water tread and they're flourishing. 
That's the cool part. Um, and so that's really what I want to see people be able to do. Um, so with that, uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you're able to utilize your aquapacer or water tread in the winter if you are. And um, again, I'm here if you need anything and thank you for joining me today. It was nice to see all of you. Take care. Thanks, Katie. Bye. Bye. Take care. I will talk to you thank next you. week. Sounds great. I can't wait. Me either. Thank, thank you me. so much. All right. I've got to run because I know I've got something next on my schedule at 1230. But Shiloh, it was wonderful to see the baby. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bye, I'll see you guys hopefully in March. Take care. Bye. Bye.